Hey everybody, welcome back. This week I'm going to be talking to you about the hottest comics releasing July 28th, 2021. But first, please be sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you're most excited for this Wednesday. Alright, I'm starting off with my top picks, and I'm starting off with a banger, Department of Truth number 11. So, written by James Tynan, drawn by Martin Simmons. I'm very excited. The last issue with Bigfoot was just like a pfft in my eyes. I loved it. Uh, and this one seems to take even more interesting turns. So, the rules of reality start to bend in the presence of wild fictions. That's why it's Darla's job to hunt down so-called cryptids before belief in them can spread. And if you're an innocent bystander caught in the crosshairs, well, the Department of Truth doesn't leave loose ends. And I really have been enjoying this book. I'm very happy that James Tynan won the Eisner for Best Writer this past weekend. You know, he's getting a lot of recognition, which is great, because I love Department of Truth. It's my number one comic right now. So I say, if you're not reading this, please go ahead and go to your local comic shop and check it out. Also, we have Superman, Son of Kal-El, number one. And this is done by, written by Tom Taylor and drawn by John Timms. And this is all about Jonathan Kent when what happens to his father when he's gone and how he takes up the mantle of Superman. So Jonathan Kent has experienced a lot in his young life. He's traveled in galaxies with his Kryptonian grandfather and lived in the future with the Legion of Superheroes who were intent on training him for the day his father, Clark Kent, could no longer be Superman. There's a hole in the Legion's history that prevents John from knowing exactly when that will happen, but all signs point to it being very soon. It's time for the son to wear the cape of his father and bear the symbol of hope that has told the world who Superman really is. And I've been really liking Tom Taylor recently. I think his job on Nightwing's been fantastic. He's always been really grand deceased. And, you know, I'm just so happy that DC's finally given him the reins to a character that hasn't been a able to have a lot of positivity in its books recently. Superman is very tough to write and I totally understand that. So hopefully uh, Tom Taylor embraces the fact of how much Superman means to this world. He is the first superhero. So I know Tom Taylor's a really big Superman fan so I'm very excited to see what he pulls out. And John Timms is doing a great job on Infinite Frontier right now. So heck yeah. I mean super excited. Also, Mirka and Dolpho Sweet Paprika number one releases this week, and I'm really excited for this. Mirka and Dolpho has been a star right now. I've noticed more and more women have been able to get out in comics and write and draw comics, which I'm very excited for. And Mirka and Dolpho is one of those standout stars. She is very unique in her sense because she does sexualize women, but not in a super creepy manner. It's very relatable, very uh, super calm. It, it's not like super in your face, uh, but it's very, it is sexualized, sensual, and I like that a lot. I think she's been drawing Paprika for a while on like her Instagram, and I'm excited. Now she has finally her own book with that. I've really liked Mirka Kandolfo's past works, you know, I really like Unnatural and Mercy, Unsacred, so I am super excited to see what she pulls out with this one. Paprika is a successful businesswoman, a New Yorker of Italian origin. Job and career consume her, forcing her to neglect her personal needs as well as her friends and family. Her heart is broken from a previous relationship and its consequences and a rigid upbringing has made her a very introverted person. She wants a romantic relationship, but she doesn't know what she's doing. Not like Dill, a naive and suave delivery boy with an angelic attitude, handsome and always surrounded by beautiful women falling for him. He doesn't have a worry in the world and this makes Paprika very nervous, but he's the guy who could help her with her feelings and with sex. Bridget Jones' Diary meets Sex and the City with a pinch of the Devil Wears Prada in the new international hit by acclaimed creator Mirka and Dolfo. So I do know this won't be for everyone, and I, I totally accept that. But I would like for you to take a chance at it. I would like you to just look at it maybe, you know. It, it's something that really intrigues me, and so therefore I wanted to share it with all of you. 
Also, we have another really big James Tyne in this week. Something's Killing the Children. And, I mean, this comic just keeps getting crazier, 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 crazier. Um, I love it. And what secrets lie at the heart of the House of Slaughter? Erica and her rival Aaron will soon learn as they are pulled deeper and deeper into the Order of St. George. But the truth may destroy them. They also just announced that something is, Something's Killing the Children is going to get a spinoff called House of Slaughter. And that is probably going to be James Tynan's biggest number one seller. I know that comic's going to be ordered like crazy. So, in the meantime, definitely pick up Something's Killing the Children this past week because I do think this will be a very special issue. It looks like there might be a first appearance in this, so I would keep my eyes out on that one. All right, time for our series shout-outs now. These are comics that I don't think are my top picks, but they definitely should be on the lookout this Wednesday. Uh, it's a really big week, so I kind of have to, like, pick and choose, which was really tough for me. So we're going to start off with Icon and Rocket, Season 1, Number 1. It's written by, ooh, I hate to mispronounce this name, Reginald Hood Hudlin. Hopefully I said that right. And it's drawn by Doug Braithwaite is long ago the stranded alien known as Arnus gave up hope of returning his home planet. Tragically, he'd also realized that his adopted home of Earth was beyond saving. Content to waste away his life in a human guise, Arnus was past caring until a day a young woman named Raquel crashed into his life. Soon she convinced him to put his incredible power to work again as a, as a hero heroic icon and to transform her into his psychic, Rocket. But an instant question on Rocket's part, why can't we do something about the drugs on my corner? Quickly set a chain of events in motion, leading to the pair becoming the most hunted beings on Earth. And they're not just being pursued by Earthlings either. So, this one seems very interesting. If you're really into, like, those milestone comics, this one is a sure win for you. Uh, I know Static Season 1 did incredibly well at my store. I was not suspecting that. So, I'm expecting this one to do pretty well as well. So, I would keep my eyes out on that. Also, we have the last book you'll ever read. This is a new vault book. It's written by Colin Bunn, drawn by Leela Lees. And civilization is a lie. Hidden deep in our genres is the truth, and it is slowly clawing its way to the surface. Olivia Cade knows the truth, and she has become the prophet of the coming collapse. Her book, Satire, is an international bestseller and is being blamed for acts of senseless violence and bloodshed all over the world. Olivia's own life is in danger from those who have read her work. Determined to conduct a book tour, she hires security professional Connor Wilson to act as her bodyguard. She only has one requirement. He cannot read her work work. So this reminds me of kind of like the ring meets like a comic book and I like that aspect. I think Cullen Bunn does great horror stuff so I am super excited to see where this goes. Volt in particular has been very surprising to me. They have done a lot of really great work so I am super interested in that. Okay, so we also have Berserker, number four. Matt Kent, Keanu Reeves, drawn by Ron Garney. I mean, it's been super hot. I can't not talk about this comic. It's rather very important to comics in the last year or so because it's gotten a lot of people that don't read comics into reading comics just because of, you know, Keanu Reeves being in it. So, what secret in Berserker's past holds the key to his immortality? The last piece of B's tragic origin and the fate of his parents are revealed as Diana continues unearthing his memories, prompting a new mission in the present day. Will this one unlock the mystery that is his existence, or will B be cursed to wander the earth forever? So, interesting to see where this goes. It is a 12-part series, and we have only gotten, this will be our fourth. So, it's moving a little, little slower than I thought it would, but still, been keeping up, steady pace, really good. Also, we have Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads, number one. And Symbiote Spider-Man is one of my favorite Spider-Man titles right now. It is done by Peter David and Greg Land. I think the art is fantastic. It really reminds me of a more older Spider-Man storyline. And, you know, 
it has all these really great characters that connect with Spidey in such a way. So I really enjoy that. This time, they're taking Spider-Man down the road less traveled to the supremely psychedelic crossroads dimension. In their most ambitious series yet, the symbiote, symbiote team puts Spider Parker in his alien costume on collision course with none other than the Incredible Hulk. In a story set just before Peter David's landmark run on the Hulk series. So I can't wait and I'm super excited. I really like some of these covers. Also, we have vinyl number two. Number one surprised the heck out of me. I knew it was going to be pretty good, but wow, was it really good. I really get Dexter vibes off of it, which I like. Um, written by Doug Wagner, drawn by Daniel Hilliard, and colored by Dave Stewart. <clears throat> Our serial killer Walter has sealed himself in an underground bunker with a sunflower death cult. Now he's being hunted by an insane myriad of husks, sunflower girls, and monsters. Everything the cult can send at him. Good thing Walter didn't come alone. That's right, Walter brought along some friends. So, this one is super cool. I love the concept of, like, killers, cults, things like that. So, I cannot wait to see where this one takes us. Now time for our late printings. We have a couple here that I'd like to discuss. Uh, in case you've missed them, here is your chance at a second time. So Barbaric, number one second print releases this week. I know a lot of people really liked this issue. Uh, I sold out at my store. And if you really like number one, you can also pick it up number two this week as well. Department of Truth number one, final sixth printing. It also has a 1 in 25 and a 1 in 50 cover for that. Um, I don't know too many stores I ordered 50, but, you know, I really like Department of Truth, so I at least ordered the 25. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. It is the last chance you will get at the number one, so I highly recommend picking it up. Legends of the Dark Knight number two second print. There is that first appearance in there with Quiz. Uh, she's like the girl version of the Riddler. Also, we have Nightwing number 78 third print. And if you've been keeping up with Nightwing, this one in particular caught my eye because it is the first time we've seen the dog, Bitewing, in any sort of costume. So I don't know if they're going to bring a costume to him in the actual comic or if this will be the f considered the first appearance in the costume. I'm not too sure. I just really enjoy this cover quite a bit. <laughs> also, we have Planet Size X-Men number one second print. TMNT The Last Ronin number three second print. Ultra Mega number three second print. Yosagi Ujimbo number 20 second print. There was another first appearance in that one. And congratulations to Yosagi Ujimbo for winning the Eisner this year. Very unexpected, but I mean, hey, it's been a very steady progress for Yosagi Ujimbo, so I'm not surprised. Uh, we also have Web of Spider-Man number 2 second print. And last but not least, X-Factor number 10 second print. And I'm not too sure if this X-Factor will be hot in the long run because of the, the death. Uh, spoiler alert, in case you don't want to know who dies. They killed off Scarlet Witch. Uh, so interesting take i'm not too sure what they will do with that how long she will be dead or anything like that so if you're really invested in the storyline and really excited for a trial of magneto i highly recommend picking up x factor number 10 second print all right and that's all for me to this week and i'll be here next week to tell you all about the hottest comics later on but first go to your local comic shop this wednesday and pick up some of these comics i mean there's some great stuff if none of these uh interest you on my list there's tons more releasing wednesday trust me go and check them out have a great day